all I hear about is property price falls. The market run is over. The crash is about to happen. Interest rates are about to rise. We're going to have a chat in this video about property prices and what's happened in the past. You know, what can history tell us around property booms and property busts to give you confidence in investing in property over the next year and over the next 10 years? Now, my name's Luke. I talk all things real estate, renovating, and financial freedom. Drop a like on this video and subscribe down below. So what the heck is going to happen? Interest rates are expected to increase this July as the RBA looks to increase interest rates to take a handle on inflation. Now, there have been some significant property price falls in the past. For one I can think of, the mining boom around 2010 to 2012, where property prices crashed in those areas as uh, commodity prices fell and demand pulled out of those markets. Prices fell from $800,000 to $500,000 in a matter of months. And are we going to see property price falls again as interest rates increase in the near future? I don't think there's going to be a 10 or 20% decrease in the next six to 12 months. Areas like Sydney and Melbourne are definitely going to see a pullback at some point as the property market ebbs and flows. There's boom periods, there's pullbacks, and then there's continued runs of growth over time. On a long-term point of view, you know, taking a long-term trajectory, the property market has slowly driven growth over time. You can estimate somewhere between say five to 8% of growth over the long term. It doesn't mean you get a linear run of growth, you know, that's a straight line of five to 8% year on year. It's large runs of growth, then pullbacks and slow increases and then large runs of growth again. So let's look back to three decreases in property values over the last 10 years. In 2011, the correction in property prices was around 4%. There was a pullback in the property market. We also saw pullbacks in 2016 and 2018. The 2016 pullback was 4% and the 2018 pullback was around 5%. So over the last 10 years, we've seen median price pullbacks around up to that 5% mark, which I guess you could call a property crash. But for me, if you've had 30% growth in your property value, so you've managed to buy in the market over 6 to 12 months ago, then you've seen at least 10, if not 20, up to 30% growth over the last 12 to 24 months. Now, what this means is if you've seen 30% growth and you have a 5% pullback, sure, that's a crash in property prices, but it's not going to be game changing to your net worth and unlikely to be game changing to your investment position as well. What might this mean though if interest rates rise and you can no longer afford to make repayments? What we've historically seen with inflation and interest rates is that as inflation and interest rates increase, so does rental prices. Now there might be a lag, there might be a lag effect where rental prices don't increase as quickly as the costs that you need to you know, pay on your home loan in terms of your repayments and expenses associated with maintenance and bills like gas and water. There's going to be a lag period of six to 12 months as these prices of interest repayments and expenses on the home increase and rental prices take a little bit of time to catch up. But there won't be a large disparity between your current rental prices and the expenses associated with your property. If you bought in a large urban area that has a large population and continued demand with large low vacancy rates, you shouldn't have any trouble renting out your property. A lot of the areas we're looking at here in the Brisbane market have sub 1% vacancy rates. And what that means is there's not an equilibrium between supply and demand. A 2% vacancy rate is widely considered an equilibrium between demand and available property for rent, but sub 2% is an area considered in very strong demand by renters and not enough available rental properties for those renters, hence the low vacancy rates. So I don't think you should get caught up in bubbles bursting uh, and red thumbnails on YouTube and people talking about property market crashes. If you've got large negative cash flow already and you've just invested in blue chip locations in Sydney and you're quitting a day job, maybe you are. You might potentially be in trouble in that situation. But if you've managed to try and balance your portfolio between buying in blue chip areas, which may be negative cash flow and buying other opportunities which might be positive cash flow and overall your property portfolio is neutrally balanced, then you shouldn't have any worries. The other thing here is that these interest rates are going to increase on a staggered basis. I can't see the RBA coming out and doing a 1% jump in interest rates because that would tank the economy. So it's going to be a steady increase over time and they might do two, three or four 
rate rises slowly at 0.15 of a percent, 0.25 of a percent, or even 0.5 of a percent. It just depends on how aggressive they want to be with slowing down the economy, but you shouldn't be worried about there, do there being a massive change or a massive jump in variable interest rates. The key factor for me comes back to balancing your portfolio. Where can you buy in growth areas to give yourself that wealth creation and also buy in cash flow opportunities to help balance your portfolio out, potentially give you more passive income and give you peace of mind that the property portfolio is going to pay for itself. Emily and I get asked this all the time. How are you comfortable building out a $5 million property portfolio and using debt through that process? Aren't you worried about going to sleep at night and aren't you worried about the banks foreclosing on you and trying to claim that debt? And what we continue to answer is the properties are worth more than the debt. So we've bought in locations that have a higher property value than debt at this point in time. And we also have bought for cash flow. So we've tried to balance our portfolio between growth and then cash flow. So we initially bought for high growth areas. We then added value to those properties. And then we look to add cash flow to our portfolio to help give us more passive income and to help give us that sleep at night factor so we didn't even have to worry about the repayments. At this point in time, our property portfolio is significantly positively geared, which means we're paying income tax on our property portfolio rental income because it covers more than our expenses in the portfolio. This is a great thing for us. It means that I have flexibility with work. It means I have more choices in my life. It gives me comfort that Emily and I could go and do other things down the track and not have to worry about paying for our living and lifestyle expenses. The whole idea of building a property portfolio is to give you choices. You don't need to be earning millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars for your property portfolio for it to give you choices. If you have a reasonable set of living expenses and your property portfolio can cover those living expenses, it's going to open up doors and open up opportunities for you to pursue things that you love and enjoy your job and enjoy what you spend time on. So don't get caught up in the hype of a property market crash. I still think markets like Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, large regional locations like Coffs Harbour, Rockhampton, Ballarat and Bendigo, might have great opportunities in the short to mid term. Now, of course, this is not financial advice, but if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel down below, and click this video over here for more things real estate, renovating, and financial freedom. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.